let's talk about some important dates when it comes to dividends. Now a dividend is not a legal obligation to the firm until the board of directors declares the dividend. Once it's declared, then they are obligated to make the payment. And there are several dates that are important here. Well, in this case, uh, this example we have here, June 30th is going to be of interest to the shareholder because that's the date that you're going to get paid. Now, after the dividend is declared, there are a couple of dates here date of record and ex-dividend date. Ex-dividend date here and date of record on the 18th. And the ex-dividend date is the date that determines who receives the dividend. You have to keep in mind, it takes a little bit of time for the transaction to take place. So the ex-dividend date is a couple of days before the date of record. The date of record is the date when the shareholder has to be registered with the company in order to receive the dividend. The ex-dividend date gives them time to sort of sort this out. So if you buy the stock before, um, in this case June 16th, you receive the dividend. If you buy it after the ex-dividend date, you don't receive the dividend. So, you know, whether you're going to get the dividend or not is determined by this ex-dividend date. Now, your first thought is, well, you know, what difference does it make? I mean, for example, let's say that we buy stock and the price of the stock is $100 per share. And let's say we buy 1,000 shares of the stock. So we're buying, right, so the, the cost is going to be equal to a hundred dollars times a thousand shares or you're buying a hundred thousand dollars in stock. All right. When you're buying the stock you're if you buy it before the ex-dividend date you're essentially getting the dividend okay or you're you're part of the price you're paying includes the dividend. So let's say the dividend is equal to five dollars, sorry, let me clean that up there, five dollars per share and so since you bought one thousand shares you're going to get you're going to get five thousand dollars in dividends so your dividend is going to be equal to a thousand shares times the five dollars a share or 5,000 in dividends. So if you think about the money you're spending, you're spending, your, your cost is broken up into two parts, or the price you're paying is broken up into two parts. $95,000 for the stock, plus $5,000 for the dividend. Okay, you're getting $100, $100,000 worth of um, the security. Now, if this happens to be, for example, December, and this is one of the warnings. I mean, every, every December, I see this in the Wall Street Journal. I see this in a lot of publications that talk about personal investing. While most investment advisors tell you any time is a good time to start investing, they also give you the warning that it may be bad to buy at the end of, uh, sometime in December. And here's why. Let's use this example. If you buy, and we'll, instead of using, instead of assuming this is June, let's consider that this is December. Okay, then I don't have to redo the table. I guess I should add like the 31st here, but you get the idea. All right, if you buy the stock on December 16th or 17th or 18th or any time after the ex dividend date, what do you pay? Well, your price will be equal to essentially the hundred dollars minus the five dollar dividend because you're not going to receive it. All right. Theoretically it doesn't fall by exactly five dollars because there's tax consequences but just to keep things simple you would probably pay ninety five dollars a share and so you would have you would have ninety five dollars a share 
times one thousand dollars or I'm sorry times one thousand shares so you'd have ninety five thousand dollars worth of stock and you would have paid again ninety five a share now suppose you bought it on the fifteenth you bought it before it went ex dividend okay they actually call that cum dividend C U M dividend it means with dividend what's gonna happen here you're gonna pay a hundred dollars a share okay so your cost is going to be equal to a hundred dollars a share times uh, the thousand shares so that's one hundred thousand dollars all right what dividend do you receive well we get a dividend we get a dividend that's equal to five dollars a share times one thousand shares so we get five thousand in dividends all right nothing surprising here ah but here's the here's the rub this five thousand dollars is taxable so let's say your tax rate is equal to thirty percent then what are you going to get or what are you what what's your after-tax dividend going to be okay so your after-tax dividends will be equal to thirty percent thirty percent times five thousand is going to be your tax Okay, so I shouldn't say after tax, I should say the tax on the dividends. Let me fix that. So the tax on the dividends is going to be equal to $1,500. So you've spent $1,500 on taxes. So in this case, your the value that you have is going to be equal to a hundred thousand minus fifteen hundred or what is that ninety nine I'm sorry ninety eight thousand five hundred Okay. So you don't really get $100,000 worth of stock. You get 98500 because you had to pay Uncle Sam 1500 in taxes. If you just waited one more day, you could have spent 95000 for 100 shares and not received the dividend. Here you spent 100000 Okay, You spent 5000 more to get this extra $5,000 dividend but you only got to keep 3500 of it because you had to pay a $1500 tax. So one of the things that investment advisors always tell you to do is if you're thinking about investing in a mutual fund in December, give them a call and find out when the ex-dividend date is and make sure you purchase after that date.